गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू इन दिस लेक्चर नंबर 19 ऑफ मॉड्यूल थ्री दैट इज प्रोसेस ऑफ एजुकेशन सो इन द लास्ट चैप्टर वी डिस्कस्ड द डायमेंशन ऑफ एजुकेशन अलॉन्ग विथ इट्स कॉन्टेंट्स गोल्स सिग्निफिकेंस दिस चैप्टर इज बेसिकली डेडिकेटेड टू प्रोसेस ऑफ एजुकेशन सो इन दिस सेशन we are going to discuss a process of education how a child understands reality and what is the role of system and teacher to facilitate in the direction so let's see what is the process of understanding in a child <clears throat> so basically in this class in this session the main point of discussions are number 1 what will be the method of human education what will be the process and number 2 some other important points for the teacher to keep in mind while imparting the education so these two points we are going to discuss in this session <clears throat> so let's start one thing is very important to be noted that a child always willing to understand learn do everything <clears throat> so child wants to understand wants to learn what is right what is not right everything he or she wants to know this knowing is innate in a child and the thing is the child can understand it means child have has enough potential to understand this existence this relationship coexistence and he or she make lot of efforts on his own to understand each and everything around him so if you observe a child you can no notice it very clearly that with the help of their parents child learns about 5000 words and not only words the child also learns their pronunciation mannerism etc so when the child is willing to learn and the teacher is willing to teach then the process of teaching and understanding becomes very simple and natural and for this there should be feeling of guidance towards the child and child has should have the feeling of gratitude towards the teacher a feeling of glory for the teacher then teaching and understanding happen naturally so child has innate desire to understand innate faculty to know everything if we teach them with the feeling of affection with the feeling of guidance then it becomes very easy for a child to understand the whole process so education can only be imparted imparted with the feeling of relationship so let's we can also understand the sources of education so what are the sources of education mother father elders family members teachers teaching institutes society order various medias etc all these are the sources of education for a child and with this environment child wants to learn child wants to know everything and we can help the child with the feeling of affection with the feeling of guidance so let's see what actually is required in student and teacher for a successful teaching what is required so that a child can receive the things as it is so number 
if we see from the perspective of student we can see feeling of trust feeling of respect feeling of affection reverence glory gratitude for the teacher is required so if the child is able to feel gratitude if the child is able to see reverence and child starts with the feeling of trust respect affection then it becomes very easy to receive the things and if we see from the context of teacher so feeling of trust respect affection with care and guidance is required for the student so if the teacher has feeling of guidance feeling of care and student has feeling of glory gratitude reverence along with trust respect affection then teaching process the process of understanding becomes very natural now there is no hindrance between teacher and student a student is asking with the feeling of trust with the feeling of respect asking every doubt whatever he or she has in mind in the expectation that teacher will help me to resolve with the feeling of guidance so if there are these feelings in student and teacher then process of understanding becomes very easy very natural so though we have studied all this feel about all this feeling in previous lectures when we talked about various relationships and at that time we saw the prominent feeling required in relations and one of those relation were teacher and student similarly a student should be inspired by the teacher by the conduct of the teacher and in teacher having excellence making effort for excellence so when a teacher makes effort for excellence when a teacher has excellency then a student becomes inspired by the teacher and once he or she becomes inspired it becomes very natural for him to receive every word from the uh, teacher similarly making effort for excellence once a student observe once a student see the feeling of excellence for the teacher he also start making effort to become like a teacher so with the feeling of excellence child and teacher student and teacher becomes co explorer and once both become co explorer it becomes very easy the process becomes very smooth very natural and understanding in both happens naturally so teaching cannot be done by the way of domination fear punishment teaching can be done with the feeling of affection with the feeling of trust with the feeling of respect so in teacher there is a feeling of guidance feeling of care and in student there should be feeling of glory gratitude reverence for the teacher so if these feelings are at the base then we can facilitate a child to understand everything what he wants to know so let's see this process of understanding this process of education so as i told you that a child intrinsically has a desire to understand about right he wants to do right he wants to understand the truth he wants to live by the truth he wants to live in a mutually fulfilling manner with human being and rest of nature or we can say a child has a need desire to understand harmony and to live in harmony he wants to live with justice all this is innate in a child 
in fact every human being has potentials to see this reality to know the reality so what is required is only drawing his attention to the reality this is the guidance that is expected of each child so in any case child is making effort to know by himself and we can be helpful in that process so if we observe a child life you can easily see that child goes through these various stages imitate follow obedience arbitrariness position reward struggle etc so i will explain this these various state briefly so if we if you observe a child child starts by observing by imitating by copying the action of parents so child starts imitating copying the parents action of parents be, uh, behavior of parents words of parents and he or she wants to know about everything in fact he asks lots of lots of questions he wants to relate to people around him he picks up the language the accent the mannerism of their surrounding he wants to do thing he tries to participate in everything the people around are doing so some thoughts and actions lead to her or his happiness this is satisfying for him or her so if thoughts and action that lead to contradiction thus makes unhappiness if it is satisfying then it makes him happiness so by time a child when he or she is going school she learned the language spoken at the home and she learned a language with accent by just imitating their parents so at very early stage he or she do he or she does this imitating and by imitating he is able to learn the whole language and not only language language with accent of their parents so if two language is spoken at home then child easily grasp the two language with accent only by imitating their parents so in this manner he or she able to recognize approximately 5000 things if you ask a child about the things around you the child would be able to tell you about 5000 things the child can identify their shape their size color property cartoon character etc etc body parts feeling in the self many things he can tell you and all these things the child has learned through imitation so in this process the child starts with imitating and then after imitation after few years he starts following it means with imitation he starts applying his mind also and if he or she follows you as it is you say that the child is obedience discipline when he goes to school when he goes to school many thing are told to the child like respect the parents be peaceful don't indulge in fight etc etc many values are told in the school but when a child do not find those values in parents then that child feel contradiction in himself or herself so suppose when a teacher tells a child be peaceful don't fight each other and if in the house 
parents are fighting with each other so what do you think the child will feel comfortable within himself or uncomfortable so definitely uncomfortable because it is not according to his or her natural acceptance so once the child feels uncomfortable he starts arbitrariness because the child is not able to tell you that you are as a parents you are living wrongly and sometimes he listen you sometimes he doesn't listen you and he come in stage of arbitrariness so sometimes he listen to his friend sometimes he listen to his school teacher sometimes he listen you and his life becomes arbitrary and when you observe this arbitrariness you start dominating the child and domination is not naturally acceptable to anyone so the more you dominate the child the more feeling of uncomfortability arises in the child <clears throat> so more, more you dominate more he feels uncomfortable and when he feels uncomfortable many times he comes he feel opposition and many times he expresses the child expresses his opposition and many times he is not able to express it so with this he reaches to revolt and this this revolt becomes struggle at one stage of the life and similarly it end up to the war so these are state stages at various state for example while uh, child going to a school he start imitating following along with you with you then at a family he start this obedience discipline arbitrariness at the college level he feels more opposition due to politics due to not able to live in relationships and many times he becomes involved in revolt in situation like war between parent and child between friends etc and what is more important is this happens generation by generation so if a child who has grown up with these stages when he would become parents his child will follow the same route so generation by generation there will be a degradation in civilization there will be a degradation in generations so during this self verification if the child finds the inputs are not right not leading to harmony then the child starts to have doubt about elders teachers if the knowing still does not take place that child conduct remains indefinite the people around the child then try to restrain the child with more instruction more domination domination and whenever you dominate whenever you put the things in the form of do's and don'ts many times he feels opposition revolt all this you can observe at your home so age may vary but the stages you can observe with your child okay so if he or she is not able to get the necessary guidance not able to get satisfactory answer he remains confused and his living becomes based on assumption an assumption may be right assumption may be wrong that's why his life becomes very arbitrary his conduct becomes indefinite then what is the way to come out of this indefiniteness this arbitrariness so what is the way the way is when a child in a state when he starts going to school there is a need to do such education which can help the child to verify the things on his or her own basis 
so at this time at school time we can give such kind of education which help the child to explore himself which help the child to find out the innateness to find out the natural acceptance once the child is able to find out his natural acceptance with exploration he may decide by own rights what is right what is wrong and once the child starts deciding the things on his own basis on the basis of natural acceptance then he becomes self discipline gradually self confidence and once this child becomes self discipline self confidence then its next generation will imitate the same process and the next generation will become self discipline will be self confident in this manner generation by generation the child improves so you have to observe you think are you able to give this process of exploration to the child are you able to give right proposals to the child are you helping your child to verify the things on his or his or her own basis so if we facilitate the child in this process he live with self confidence and it is very easy at this at this stage because child is already looking for things child already wants to know what is right you have to just facilitate it so if we facilitate the child during this process it becomes very easy for him to live with self confidence or self discipline so we can see the whole process with this table simply so at this left hand there is a age right hand there is a process so if you see when the child is very young he imitate and follows you through observing doing learning understanding this is the process so he starts observing he starts learning understanding copying you imitating you then at the age of when he is young uh, young he is adult then he start understanding learning doing he is more curious to know about the reality etc similarly when the child when the child is young youth then we can facilitate all these things we can facilitate him understanding the existence reality we can improve his competence to live in relationship we can impart skills for production right utilization of the physical facility we can make him aware about his consciousness we can tell him about participation in family and society all this we can facilitate the child at this age at this state of the life so we have to just facilitate the child child is child always looks for the right things because of his natural acceptance so if we facilitate this process the life of child becomes very easy becomes very natural similarly so we talked about what is the process how the child learns the things from their parents from the environment so we talked about various state state like imitating following obedience and we saw that if we facilitate that child in the process of exploration then he may become able to verify the things at his or her own natural acceptance this facilitation 
makes the child life natural so with this we can also see what is the goal of education how would we evaluate so on completion of the process of this education the person should achieve excellence so if we facilitate the child in this process what would be the outcome the outcome would be in the form of excellence now the child would be living with excellence so excellence means understanding all levels of living and being able to participate at every level so excellence means to understand harmony and to live in harmony at all level so if a child is able to live in harmony as an individual he is able to live in harmony in the family he is he knows about his participation in the society he knows interconnectedness interrelatedness of the four orders and he is practicing accordingly it means the child has a feeling of excellence and now the process is complete now child is living with the excellence so this is a kind of evaluation so if the child achieve this state feeling of excellence and he starts living with this it means our process was correct it means we become successful as a parents as a parents we are successful to impart the right process to impart the right contents to impart the right education in our child and once the child is ready with this excellency then he is able to participate in larger order he is a natural agent of harmonious society now whatever he would think rather it is related to skill rather it is related to technology in any field he will fulfill the excellence he will ensure the mutual complementarity with rest of the nature he will ensure justice with human being all these things would happen naturally if we facilitate that child in the process of exploration okay friend so let's see now we will discuss some important points which are required to keep in mind while providing providing education so as a teacher as a parents also so number 1 excellency in the teacher so the important issue for the child during the process of learning and understanding is the feeling of relationship in the teacher for students and whatever he is teaching that is also seen in his behavior in his conduct so once the teacher lives according to values then a child if the child see excellency only if it is reflected in the behavior of the teacher only based on acceptance of excellence the child may connect with the teacher and then he becomes ready to understand so it is necessary for the teacher that he the teacher should strive for excellency whatever he is telling he is living up to that mark then only child can inspire from the teacher so number point 2 clarity a teacher should have this clarity as a parents we should have this clarity that every child has a potential to understand so it is very important point to be noted there is a need to have the clarity that every child has a potential to understand every child can understand what is right in that case what would happen if i know the child has innate potential to know i do not get angry or irritated in fact every time at every situation we as a parents as a teacher try 
how we can do better for our child so we can see that piece of learning can be different so one can learn say 10 times faster than the other but at one time every child learns and understand so if i know about this innate potential of the child in fact i do not get irritated i become complement in every situation with the child and the next is panel law what is this it is again an important point it shows that the process of explaining and teaching with patience is important for learning and understanding not the process of giving the penalty punishment if we explain things properly keeping in mind that every child has innate potential to know we try to arouse interest in the child it is better transferred to the child the punishment process appears to be an obstacle most of the time rather than being a help to it so because that punishment creates environment of fear it the child may lost his interest in this environment so it is important to know that teaching can happen with the feeling of affection with the feeling of guidance so punish punishing is not a substitute for explaining and teaching so the process of education becomes successful only when the child understands it properly and not just remembers it now with this we can impart technical education also we can impart skills in the child also so right understanding and right feeling as we talk many times is the need of every human being so at least this right understanding and right feeling is to be achieved by every human being and distribution of skills may vary so a child may be enough competent in one skill but not in the other so we have to observe that and we can distribute his skills accordingly but it is important to note that every child wants this right understanding and right feeling and with this we can talk about production so primary production secondary production and tertiary production so there is a need of primary production so if a student has skill has right feeling and right understanding then first there is a need to produce the things which are primarily required for everyone like food grains these are primary production then secondary production then tertiary production tertiary production like softwares making softwares etc these are tertiary production so if a child goes through this understanding if a child has a skill then he can also prioritize the production which production is to be done priority level so primary production production that helps the nurturing and protection of the body is required at priority so we will discuss all these productions primary secondary and tertiary in coming slides in previous in next lectures so let's sum up the whole thing so important source of learning of the child are the family teaching institute society the environment in the learning process the child goes to various states like imitating following obedience etc the goal of education is to facilitate the process of development developing those ability in the individual which are essential for ensuring human society and order and the child starts learning from the teacher if the child sees the excellence in the teacher the teacher should have the clarity that every child has a innate potential to understand so with this we can help the child in the process of understanding so that's all from my side thank you very much have a good day let's meet in the next lecture thank you very much